Next to me is one of the rarest BMWs ever made. This is a 2011 BMW 1M Coupe. And there was only about 6,300 of these ever made, and only 740 of them ever made it to the United States. The 1M was only made for one model year, 2011, and only came in three different colors, white, black, and this one being in Valencia orange. This is a very special car and one of my personal favorite BMWs ever made. It's actually in my top two next to the M2. And today I'm going to show you all about this ultra rare BMW and show you why you might want one of these. But chances are you might not be able to get one. Let's start off with the basics. BMW brought the 1 Series to the United States for a relatively short period of time. They bring over the 128 and the 135. Of course, they also had the 1M, but they couldn't call it the M1. That's because the M1 was a race car from back in the 70s. So they just swapped the 1 and the M, and that's how we got the name for this vehicle. So let's dive into this BMW and see what makes it so special besides the rarity. We're actually going to start off with the most controversial part of the 1M when it first came out, and that's the engine. It was a non-M engine. It was pulled out of the Z4 S-Drive 35 IS. That's a mouthful for a car name, but it was taken out of that car and it wasn't an M-specific engine. At the time, that was a bit controversial for some people. However, it does have a fair amount of power. This 3-liter inline-six engine produces 335 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. And in this little car, it launches it to 60 in only 5.2 seconds. It's also mated to a 6-speed manual transmission. That combination of a relatively powerful engine and a six-speed manual in this small coupe is what makes people love this car so much. The driving experience on these M coupes are like nothing else. You'll never see another car like this come from BMW. I'm almost sure of it. And it's the driving experience that makes people love these so much. In the future, I hope to do a proper driving review with the 1M, also with an M2. It's almost successor of sorts. Despite this not being the most powerful M car of all time, it's that driving experience that I've been talking about so much that makes people love these just so much more than the average M car. Something I've heard mentioned about these BMWs before that I've noticed is how simplistic it is. It's not overstyled dramatically, but it does have some good M styling cues. It's very simplistic. That simplicity is what makes me appreciate the 1M over a lot of other M cars that are out now. They're way overstyled in my opinion, while this is just easy going. Starting off with the front end, you have a slightly different bumper that's larger than the standard 1 Series bumpers. Along the sides, you have some fender flares which make this car sit pretty wide. Just behind these fenders, you have a little indent that's supposed to mimic where a air vent would go. You have an M logo located on here. Just above that, you have your side mirrors, which are M specific. The roof line of the 1M Coupes is very similar to the convertible 1 Series. I'll show a picture right here. They look very similar in their silhouettes. It gives off a very short, almost stocky look, but I don't hate it. It looks pretty good on this car, giving that convertible and coupe a very similar look. Again, on the rear, you have wide fender flares to fit those 19-inch rims. The rear has a few more M-specific styling cues, such as on the bumper, you have these little air vents on each side. This 1M has an aftermarket Eisman exhaust on it. Keeping up with the simplistic look, you have a very, very subtle spoiler going across the trunk lid. On the passenger side, you do have an M badging. It doesn't say 1M, it just says M. Not specific to this car are these taillights. I do like this design. It's one of my favorite BMW taillights of all time. Lastly, look at how this car sits. With these relatively wide fender flares, large tires, it looks pretty aggressive for such a little coupe. Also, this color is just so beautiful. The Valencia orange is by far my favorite color to get these BMWs in. Sitting inside the 1M coupe, again, the theme of simplicity is very apparent. Nothing overstyled, but it's beautifully put together. It's got a blend of three materials in here. First, and my favorite, the Alcantara that's located on the doors with this orange stitching, also on the dash, and just above your speedometer. There's also quite a bit of leather on your doors, your dash, steering wheel, and of course, the seats. 
There's also some plastic in here located near your gear shift and on your infotainment screen. Sometimes on some higher end cars, I would dock them for cheap plastic, but this material is actually quite nice. And plus the starting price of these cars wasn't like the M3. So I do forgive them for putting some plastic in here. Plus, the point of the 1M was to be a driver's car, not for some overly luxurious cruiser. But let's pause for a second and take a look at these door panels. They're beautifully put together with that combination of leather and Alcantara with that stitching. Let's pause one more time and take a look at this dashboard at how well it is really put together and designed. And quite frankly, this interior from BMW is my favorite in any BMW ever. Sometimes simplicity really is key. This will age beautifully over time and has in the past 12 years. As far as technology goes, you got a few things in here such as cruise control, fully automatic driver and passenger side windows, as well as dual zone AC controls and heated seats. And the radio does have the BMW screen. There's also a good amount of M logos, ones located in your tachometer, on your steering wheel, and both on the driver and passenger headrests. Lastly, when opening the doors, there's also an M logo, both located on the driver and passenger side. There are back seats, but they are very small. They're bigger than the average little GT car, but they are not big by any means. And there you have it. That was the 2011 BMW 1 M Coupe. One of my favorite BMWs of all time. Seriously, I'm not a huge, huge fan of BMW, but they do make some cars that are just too cool and this tops that list and surprisingly for a brand that i'm not a super huge fan of i find almost nothing wrong with the 1m as you could see in my video i was purely positive about the car and what reasons are there not to be positive you'll never see anything like this from bmw ever again or really from any brand and that's probably why they demand the prices they do. When these first came out, they were only about $47,000. And I say only relative to M car prices. The BMW M3 of the time cost roughly $58,000. That's about a $10,000 difference. Even at the time, they were demanding a little bit more than that, a little bit of dealer markups. But nowadays, to get one of these, you're gonna be having to spend around seventy dollars to $80,000. And if people are paying those prices for this car, then it's, I guess, worth it. While I wouldn't pay that much for this special car, I know plenty of people would. And again, I'm not a super huge BMW enthusiast, but I can see the value in it. With only 740 something of these ever being brought to the United States, I can see why people are paying that kind of money. Anyways, that was the 1M Coupe. Thank you again to Carex Autos for letting me use their vehicles for my reviews. This 1M is for sale, and I'll link it in the description below, along with Carex Auto's other inventory. And thank you all for watching.